Vectors and scalars. All the quantities you will meet can be categorized as either vectors or scalars. Scalars are completely described with a magnitude, that is a number and a unit, for instance 15 kilograms is a scalar. Vectors need a magnitude with a unit, but also need a specified direction to be complete, for instance 7 newtons to the right would be a vector. Here I've listed several quantities that we can classify as either scalars or vectors. One hint that works in most cases, try giving a direction to the quantity. If it makes no sense, the quantity is probably a scalar. If it does make sense, in most cases it will be a vector, but there are some exceptions that I'll mention when we get to them. Well, I've already mentioned that 15 kilograms is a scalar, so mass must be a scalar. Energy. It makes no sense to say 7 joules to the left, so energy must be a scalar. Likewise, you wouldn't have a 60 watt to the left light bulb, and so power is a scalar. Time also has no meaning in terms of spatial direction, and so time is a scalar. Temperature. You wouldn't say that you had a temperature of 37 degrees C right, and so temperature is a scalar. Momentum. Well, direction is very important in momentum calculations, particularly in terms of conservation of linear momentum. So momentum is a vector. Speed. Now speed is one of the first exceptions I mentioned in that it would make sense to say somebody was travelling at 30 meters per second to the left but speed is in fact a scalar the quantity very similar to speed but which is a vector requiring direction is velocity force now clearly direction is very important to force and so force is a vector displacement displacement is actually a vector quantity and it's the equivalent of the vector quantity of distance. It's distance from the starting point in a given direction. Velocity, I've already mentioned, is a vector. That's like speed but with direction. Distance must be a scalar, as displacement is the equivalent vector. Weight is a force and is therefore a vector. And for acceleration, direction is important and so acceleration is a vector. We can represent vectors with an arrow where the length of the arrow represents the magnitude and the arrow points in the direction of the vector. You'll be familiar with drawing forces like this at key stage 3. For example here we have an object with a force of 4 newtons acting to the right. If there was a bigger force the arrow would be longer and so on. The resultant force in this case is just the 4 newtons to the right. Here we have a box where there is 4 newtons to the right and 2 newtons to the left. So this arrow here will be twice the length of this arrow here as it represents twice the force. The resultant force here is 2 newtons to the right. It's easy to draw vectors like this when they act in the plane of the paper, but sometimes we might want to represent vectors where they're coming out towards us or going into the paper. We can do this quite simply as well. Here we have a vector coming out of the screen, and here we have a vector going into the screen. Clearly we can't represent the magnitude on these diagrams, but this is as if an arrow was coming towards you and you see the point of the arrow. In this case the arrow is going away from you and you see the cross of the flights on the arrow. Now to look at a simple problem involving velocity, the vector of motion. A canoeist can paddle at a speed of 5 meters per second in still water but here the water velocity is 2 meters per second to the right. This canoeist is paddling at 5 meters per second relative to the water to the right but the water is also moving at 2 meters per second to the right 
so the canoeist will have a resultant velocity of 7 meters per second to the right. So in this case 5 plus 2 equals 7 meters per second. This canoeist is paddling at 5 meters per second relative to the water to the left but the water is now moving at 2 meters per second to the right and so the canoeist will have a resultant velocity of 3 meters per second to the left as 5 plus minus 2 equals 3. Adding vectors. If you were to walk 3 meters in this direction followed by 4 meters in this direction it would just be the equivalent of travelling 5 meters in this direction. This is just a simple 3, 4, 5 triangle. Equally, if we had a 3 newton force in this direction and a 4 newton force in this direction, that would be the equivalent of having a 5 newton force in this direction. If we simply slide the 4 newton force up to here, we have effectively the same diagram as on the left and this shows us how we can add vectors. We arrange the vectors tip to tail the sum will be a vector starting at the first tail ending at the last tip. So here we go from the tail of the 3 meters up to the tip then we have the tail of the 4 meters to here the sum, this 5 meter line goes from the first tail to the last tip. Equally here we start with the tail, go to the tip of the 3 newton force then the tail to tip of the 4 newton force the sum or resultant is from the first tail to the last tip. You could find the resultant just by a careful scale drawing on graph paper. Don't forget the sum is also a vector and so we would need to specify a direction in our answer. We'll look at this more in the next example. This question asks what is the resultant of a 7 newton force acting due north which we have here and a 9 newton force acting due east which we have here. So what we could do is draw the line F here in a scale drawing and simply measure it. Alternatively we could use Pythagoras and then the force F would be equal to the square root of this side squared and this side squared. So F is equal to the square root of 7 squared plus 9 squared which is the square root of 130 which is 11.4 newtons. Looking at that as an answer it seems reasonable. It's going to be bigger than our 9 newton but it's going to be smaller then the two added together of 16 newtons. But don't forget that F is also a vector and so we must specify a direction. We could draw on the diagram here the angle theta and then tan theta equals opposite over adjacent which is 9 newtons over 7 newtons. This gives theta of 52.1 degrees. So once again the sum of vectors is a vector so we must specify both size and direction. In the A-level course examples will consist of a maximum of two vectors acting at right angles to each other.